what is your 30 seconds or 60 second pitch about what Crimson Hexagon does for these uh, large brands? So we do um, have in our customer base some of the largest, most well-known brands in the world. And generally the, the story that we can um, really convey to them and the reason why they hire us is I can say to, to the CMO, to the C-suite, to you know, someone in the, in the uh, marketing team or the consumer insights team saying, the most important thing for you to compete and to be able to win in your business, in your category, is to understand what consumers are thinking how your brand is being received within that, um, you know, customer base that you're targeting and needing to do that more broadly among not only your customers, but consumers at large. And the way you've done this in the past, Mr. Brand, is through a number of focus groups, surveys, traditional market research. Well, today, because of technology, you can do that at scale with uh, public data that exists in social media, websites, at a scale never before known. And I can tell you what's trending in your uh, particular audience that is important to you. I can tell you what types of products and conversations are trending. And, uh, and I can do that on a variety of different types of uh, conversations across the board. There were really two groupings of use cases. One was, just to understand the social channel itself for a marketer. So a marketer would put out a message into, into Facebook or Twitter um, and wanted to understand what the sentiment was, what the general trends in conversations were, and, uh, and try to really be able to, to get a quick answer to baseline their current marketing program content and then make adjustments accordingly. The other big grouping was uh, market research. So CPG companies, you know, uh, you know, companies in in a uh, you know, variety of, of, of industries, really trying to understand how to extract insights from the data to help them enter into new markets, uh, understand trends, be get a little deeper insight into thinking about new products, new geographies, new demographics, those types of things. You know, what is, in your opinion, the right approach for a startup in that phase to say, okay, when it is and how it is that we're going to go and upgrade the core of the technology or what pieces are we going to go and upgrade? You have to build the discipline in to understand investment cases. So there are a limited number of resources that you have, right, between product and engineering. You're getting all these inputs and you really need to be able to qualify and discern which investments are the most valuable from, from the aspect of being able to get that return, right? So. If your focus is the fact that you believe that your core technology is going to fall behind, and so falling behind will mean that you will lose customers to competitors, then you need to outline and define your investment case to say, in advance of that happening, we're going to spend, let's say, the next two years improving our core technology, and the outcome that we're looking for is to maintain and improve our, our recurring revenue, right? Also to win new business, but I would look at that strategy, a strategy where you're going at back at your core platform as traditionally more of a recurring revenue targeted problem. So then you gotta look, well, if, if I need to invest $5 million over the next two years to, to, to leapfrog my current technology and drive it, like, is that going to drive, you know, $15 million in new revenues? Uh, I mean, in recurring revenues, you know, securing that or 20 million or whatever that number is and really being able to articulate that and, and measure it. versus taking that $5 million, launching a new product that can drive a whole brand new, you know, business because you've seen inroads in that. 